When I graduated college, my father said, what are you going to do with your life now? And I said, I don't know. My father said, well, why don't you come work in the family business with me? Sherry, pierogies, please. At the Selka. The Selka. I bet you half the staff here have been there at 2 o'clock in the morning. People love this place. You don't want to break good habits, and it's a good habit. Thank you. Jason Burchard has a hunger to feed people like his father, Tom, and grandfather before him. My grandfather started this business in the center of little Ukraine, escaping Russian oppression back in the late 1940s. He opened it as a newsstand, but he turned it into a forum to help Ukraine. I know that he had dreams of his daughter marrying a good Ukrainian boy, so he reconciled to the next best thing, a good American boy. After he passed away, people could see that I was gonna keep Vasilka going. But the Ukrainian community gave Tom a cold shoulder. Veselka was a laughing stock. I had to take a leap instead of doing what my father-in-law did. Like, give me French fries and... My father put a lot of hours into the business. He was very hard on me, making sure the details were met. Our relationship was business-like, and things were moving at a slower pace than what I would have preferred. Be careful what you wish for. Jason took over Veselka when the pandemic hit. And then... Don't think of this as a war in Ukraine. This is a war in a free world democracy and keep the pressure on our local officials that New Yorkers stand with Ukraine. Right. It's atrocity what's going on there, Mr. Mayor. I'm sure you're well aware of it. <laughs> Jason has to be the leader at the local level. A donation? With food, you can connect anybody. Veselka has become the hub for helping Ukraine. Jason. The Ukrainian baseball team is in town. By you being here, you are a sign of hope. My Ukrainian staff, they're in a state of shock. Vitaly, longtime employee, parents are still in Kiev. But I'm doing my best to distract him. Vitaly, I think you need a little practice. My friends is there and I'm here. I just don't feel okay to like be okay. We gotta be careful we don't take on too much. I'm gonna need your help to bring my parents over here. Jason just says yes to everything. <laughs> Let's do it. I've spent more time here than I have spent with my daughter. But we're saving lives from here. It's good to see you all. Uh, Likewise. All right, let me just get a little bit, uh, one thing out of the way. Okay, when I put when I saw the poster, the that fantastic poster, uh, for the film, and I I just just uh, you know because I thought a couple of friends might get a kick out of seeing there was a documentary coming out about this restaurant from our town, um, the reaction online was so strong. Within a few days, there were like a hundred comments and 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 uh reactions to this post for people that were like this isn't real can this actually be <laughs> it is like really uh blown away i'm like wow i, I should have uh been, i should have made a documentary about this 20 years ago but michael you did <laughs> an excellent job i could not have done anywhere nearly as incredible as yours and the timing of this is just unbelievable of course at the end of the day can you yeah i, I... go ahead michael I was just going to say, I, I'm Please. always showing the clientele that, that you know, has been going to Veselica for 70 years. And I know how many of them are filmmakers because NYU is obviously a neighbor and I went to NYU film school. Um, to be the person to tell their story, it is beyond humbling because they could have had their pick and approval of every pitch from every filmmaker. <laughs> and I I feel truly blessed to be the guy. So. I've, I, you know, I've thanked them before, but I will thank them the rest of my life. Well, I'd like to hear that story then of like how that you guys did, how how it was presented to you guys and, you know, maybe the conversation that happened where you said, yeah, let's do this. And then also as a part two of the question, uh, I'd like to know the timeline in there with the war, uh, on with the war, like when that all happened and played out, uh, if you don't mind. So I, I met I with Tom and Jason. I'd been going to the restaurant for 20 years Me and yeah. uh, mutual uh, friends and colleagues of ours made an introduction. And this was back in November of uh, 
2021. And so at that point, the war wasn't even uh, an idea in anyone's mind other than, you know, Putin's. Yeah. And we um, we got together at the restaurant and I had already known the kind of multi-generational story. And I knew that I wanted to do a, a movie with a theme of, of fathers and sons. Like that was always at its core. And then <clears throat> Tom and Jason, you know, life happens and we everybody just kind of sat on it for a bit. And when I heard that the, in early February um, or late January of 2022, there was all these rumblings of the uh, war may happen. And kind of knowing that Veselka was started by Tom's father-in-law, Jason's grandfather, Vladimir Darmerqual, in 1954 as a place of re refuge for displaced Ukrainians after World War II, I felt like, wow, there's such a, as Jason says in the movie, history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. And I thought there were so many additional potential layers there. So I said, you know, I didn't ever want to exploit anyone or any moment in time, but I just felt like, wow, there's a resonance here that I think if you're going to tell your story, it now is the time. And they agreed. And we started our first day of filming and you see it's pretty much all of act one um, is day 11 of the war. And by the way, we should also mention as we encroach upon the, or we're approaching rather the uh, two year, uh, um, I hate to say the anniversary, but it's been two years coming up uh, on the uh, right next weekend, which is also your opening theatrical two blocks, three, uh, three or four blocks away rather at the Village East in New York City for the documentary. Um, so, uh, and then uh, Tom and Julie, Jason, were, were, come on, there had to be some major uh, hesitation about uh, doing this. You guys, I mean, from what I can see in the film, the, 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 the activity, the amount of work required, you eat, I mean, literally eat, breathe and sleep this business, especially now, Tom, as you're retiring, Jason, I mean, what, what were your concerns, Jason? I mean, I, my father has put a lot of uh, his heart, tears and, you know, sweat into this business. He's been an amazing role model and, and we, we, in in suffering or persevering through other tragedies such as 9-11 and Superstorm Sandy and the hard times of the 70s and, the, you know, that we knew that, you know, with strength and perseverance that we would, you know, weather this storm. Um, and, it, you know, with the, the love and support of the customers that came out in droves early on really kept myself uh, driven as well as my staff, you know, who are a majority of Ukrainian descent or of Eastern European descent, you, you would think they want to kind of hide in a hole that we all came together, not only as a, as a, uh, employees or as a group, uh, here at the restaurant, but the community. So that really gave me the fuel to do and take on the initiatives and raise monies and awareness and the staff being involved. Um, and we continue, and like you said, it's a, a, tri a unfortunate circumstance that we're coming into two years into this. But it, it, I think the movie shows that as a community, we can come together and we can, you know, that expression, we can save one life uh, as best as we can. Did you, are you saying, though, that you guys saw this as an opportunity, no disrespect to the fact that, you know, Michael comes in wanting to make a, an entertaining film, but that also this could actually help um, Ukraine, like that that you saw that well, pretty you know, quickly? Uh, I, I wasn't sure if it was it was shot to be on a, for an entertainment scale. You know, we had I, I, my father had been here for 50 plus years. There was there was something that we knew that there was something here. We wanted to create something along the father and son story, as well as, uh, you know, capturing what this neighborhood was going through during those, you know, terrible times in Ukraine and the trials and tribulations of my, uh, you know, both male and female staff of, of age to fight. I mean, uh, you know, there were several of them that wanted to go back, but we, through gentle coddling, we said, we can do, we can help, we can do more from here. And realizing now those options, I think they've chosen the right options to to stay and to help uh, from afar. Yeah, Tom, I'd like to hear your 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 uh, thoughts about it. Um, I mean, you're trying to let go, and 
<laughs> yes. Every time, as as uh, Michael Corleone said, different background, different ethnic background, but as he said, you know, every time you try to get out, they keep on you back in, right? <laughs> well, I, actually, yeah, I dare you to actually, retire. <laughs> uh, he, he he has, but I know, I know. As as he says in a movie, reluctantly. Um, yeah, seeing the reaction to this film and having the opportunity to talk to people about it. Um, I mean, that's a total pleasure for me. This is kind of my legacy. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's a, it's, there's something magic about Veselka. I can't really put specifically my finger on what it is or why it is, but just, you know, well, responding to your social comment I about the reaction of people, you know, uh, uh, now that this film is out and we had an experience in Santa Barbara where, we said to the audience, would you like to, do you have any questions? What lady stood up and gave a five minute testimonial about how she loves, she and her family love Veselka and she's so glad we're there. So that, you know, that that pulls me back in enthusiastically. You know, it's a daily kind of uh, revelation reminder of what was created Impact. there. Yeah. And I, I, I think that one of the main things for me is Whatever that is, whatever that magic is, that hominess, that welcome welcomingness, was created by a Ukrainian and Polish uh, community that worked with me at Vaselka for fifty plus years, and I feel we all feel a strong uh, desire to give some of that back, and, and to see them have to suffer under Putin's thumb now uh, is just heartbreaking. It's just. Um, uh, it's being on sad. It, yeah. Heartbreaking is the right description for it. Um, I, I, I will share just briefly cause I go back uh, as a New Yorker and I had my, even though I grew up in New York city, my first apartment was on 15th street and third Avenue back starting in the early nineties. And, um, I had a first date with a young woman who at the time I was a young man and, and I took her to Veselka on our first date and she was wearing a lovely, I should have known better. And guys don't just dis- don't, make an opinion about me based on this but she was wearing a white top and she ordered the the uh the borscht, borscht. and it has the potato you know did i not needless to say she was uh so upset when she splattered she dropped the potato <laughs> off her spoon i just felt so bad so uh that's one of my one of my favorite memories what's that michael it leaves a mark, both the rest of it. <laughs> it can leave, it leave exactly. <laughs> That's going to leave a mark. Uh, Michael, but I, I'm thinking about uh, what a beautiful story there. I was brought to tears a number of times in the film because of the father-son story, because of the Ukraine story, because of uh, of Vitaly's story. And I there is so I, I'm, I'm Mike, I guess what I'm wondering is how in hell did you find because there's multiple threads in the story and I wasn't sure what's the backdrop here. I know I thought we were just going to uh, see a film about Blin and pierogies and it is one about that too but then it becomes the ukraine war the war in ukraine to backdrop but it's more than a backdrop it actually moves to the front of this you know <clears throat> takes a more front and central role that that part of the story so i'm wondering how you you know navigated that as a filmmaker and a storyteller so this i took a giant kind of creative leap from anything i've made before um in making Veselka. And I embraced the challenges and kind of said, let's just see what happens and evolves. And on day one of filming, which was day 11 of the war, which the only, I I remember Jason and I talking about this at the time, the only comparable feeling close to what was felt in the neighborhood and and Veselka that day was 9-11. I mean, it was, it felt near identical. Um, I don't even know if the movie really fully captures that essence Um, but what does come across in act one is that no one really felt comfortable speaking with me and it was completely understandable. And there's a moment. Like the staff, you mean? The staff. And so I never wanted to interject myself into the movie. I never wanted to be a character, but I, I would always say to Jason, sometimes a non-answer is actually the more dramatic answer because they're telling you multi-level answer of, of how they're feeling by not answering and so at some point I in that first day I was like okay well I'm gonna have to just kind of film myself asking people to talk to me because no one would talk to me 
<laughs> and then over the course of time, I think everybody realized that my my intention to my teams was true and authentic. And we were just there to just share the events as they un, unraveled. And so I just and maybe, started to- And maybe like yeah. a uh, borscht stain on a white top, it, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I had to get that in. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I knew that this was something I was going to really have to invest in over time, that the story was going to tell me what it was. And, you know, at the end of the day, after, you know, editing for like over eight months straight up until like three weeks ago, basically, or a month and a half ago, um, A, the movie tells you what it is, but also there's a point when you realize what the movie is and you say, as long as my execution of it is um, solid, and and the audience feels like they're the hands in, of a of a solid storyteller, people are I think are willing to just take the ride to see where is this going to go. And as you know, and as the audience will see, it, it covers the first year of the war. And I would say it's not a war movie. To me, it's the antidote to war or the antidote to a war movie. But obviously, the backdrop. Uh, and a catalyst is the war. Um, so that was that was the general journey I took and kind of just let the pieces fall where they may and just tried to make make the movie edit the story in, a, in an assured way so that the audience at the very least said, I'm going to keep going because I, I feel like this guy wants to tell us something and we're getting there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just going to watch it, you know, watch the year unfold in real time, basically. Well, you have a great team there, so it sounds very organic. But you know, mm -hmm. um, it it fell together quite quite nicely. I really recommend it for people. It's it, and the full title, by the way, is Veselka, the Rainbow on the Corner, at the center, at the, center the world. Of the what world. a beautiful <laughs> title! Yes. <laughs> has has life returned to normal uh, now that the sort of well, I guess that you're still on this journey with the film, even though the production may have been ended some time ago, but. And and is there a norm you can you in the beer shard life? Either of you can uh, well, the, the, the business business has returned to normal. Yeah. Um we, we can we continue to raise awareness and have different menu items that are uh, dedicated uh, earmarked the sales for humanitarian relief efforts. Right. Our one of our partners from the beginning of the war and uh, since their inception, Razum for Ukraine, which is a nonprofit, celebrating their 10 year anniversary, just had a large press conference and uh, asked us to be a member. You know, we've been a corporate sponsor, sponsor of theirs since their inception. They're trying to continue. They're having a candlelight vigil uh, this year uh, to mark the two year uh, date. Um, and we're getting, uh, we're gearing up for the the premiere here in New York. Yeah, talk about that. Um, I, I think I, I think it's a great uh, platform because I think the war news. We live unfortunately in a short news cycle society, and as this hot potato, hot potato in, in Congress uh, is being passed along and uh, debated, you know, we we all have a uh, we all have a responsibility to continue to keep keep the message alive that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is a small cost to what if we don't do this now, you know, uh, pass the bill to send some more money. What what it's going to cost us a lot more down the road. It's and my message all along, it, my message all along, we shouldn't think of this as a war against Ukraine. This is a war against democracy. Democracy, uh, absolutely. So, so right. We, uh, you know, at its at its heart. So yeah. we have to continue to keep keep that message. There are a lot of distractions. The political election and the, unfortunately the, the unrest in the middle east but this is still an active uh um, issue that we need to continue to advocate for so what are we uh, so, uh, like, no tom please well uh, or, or, well, or like, sorry <laughs> either one of you guys um but you i didn't mean to interrupt well, you you, but... you ask if life has gone back to normal i mean uh this is for me this is better than normal to now have a chance to to uh, share this beautiful film with uh, extended family and friends and all of our customers over the years who have supported veselka again i think there's something magic about veselka largely it's 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 due to the to our our hardworking and dedicated staff 
for the past 50 years, but it's also largely due to our customers who who really embrace kind of the the hominess. Um, we're not a really classical professional restaurant. It's basically a group of of grandmas cooking homemade food uh, that we share with people, and that, that that's not a that's not a standard form of restaurant management, but it's worked for us and it's created this homey feeling. And so to, to now be able to share that with, again, family, friends, and and all of our dedi really? dedicated customers over the years, I mean, they 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 created this. And, uh, you know, I really feel gratified that we now have the opportunity to share it with them. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful to Michael for really catching the essence of what Veselka is and helping us define it and document it yep. and share it with people. That's lovely. Uh, hey, you know, as I'm, I was about to remind people that uh, the film is for you New Yorkers is opening on Friday and maybe broader. I don't know. If you can you can let me know uh, on Friday the twenty third. That's coming right up at the Village East, which is like four blocks north of or three blocks north, three blocks mm -hmm. north of yeah. Veselka, and um, uh, is. Yeah, you can. We can talk a little bit about what that's going to look like—the premiere, theatrical premiere in New York City. But I'm also interested in knowing: Will the film be able to? Will Ukrainians be able to see the film Very in question. Ukraine? Uh, yeah, we actually just officially announced uh, yesterday that um, we have a news breaking. It's going item. Yeah, um, we made a uh, deal with uh, the theater chain Planeta Kino. Oh, and so the documentary is going to be in six different cinemas across uh, Ukraine: Kharkiv, Kiev, uh, Lviv, and Odessa, uh, starting February twenty second. They they do their we do Friday to Thursday in the U.S. They do Thursday to uh, Thursday, so they're February twenty second to the twenty eighth. And then our U.S. theatrical is in New York, as you said, at the Village East Cinema. Um, in LA, uh, the Lemley NoHo 7 in North Hollywood, in mm -hmm. New Jersey, the Burnsville Cinema 3, in Washington, D.C., the Regal Gallery Place, and that's all February 23rd to the 29th. And then we have kind of small rollouts after that. So in March, we're in uh, Boulder, Colorado for a week at the Dairy Arts Center. And in April, we have a, a, an exciting one-off uh, event with some partners in the Ukrainian community in Chicago at the Siskel Center. And then um, for a multi-day run starting April 12th, we're going to be in Toronto at the Ted Rogers Hot Docs uh, Cinema. And there will be other other theaters that pop up, possibly even in the next couple of days for the week of February 23rd, where we, we're talking to many theaters across the country. So for updates, people can visit us at Veselka Movie on all our social platforms and also the Veselka Restaurant website, which I believe, guys, is just veselka.com, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah, uh, I checked it out. It's um, it's all up there. You can watch. Uh, we'll have the trailer at the beginning of this interview. I'll put the trailer on so people can see that. And um, um, and what what opening uh, that night in New York City? I mean, this is the the local. This is like the, I don't know the, uh, next door neighbor practically of the of the restaurant. What is what is okay. that opening night going to look like? Who's going to be there? What's what's going to be served? <laughs> well, our, our premiere, so to speak, is the 705 show, and it was sold out, I think, within a day oh. of the tickets kind of being like officially announced. <laughs> I, I so, uh, but there are four or five showings every day through the week, um, and we will be there doing Q and A's pretty much every night. Oh, wow. uh, usually wonderful! After the, yeah, after mm -hmm. the 705 p.m. Um, on Friday, Saturday, and then the Monday through Thursday. And then on the Sunday showing, the q and I believe, happens after the 425 p.m. show. Well, and there'll be different people throughout the week kind of rotating in and out. But um, Tom, Jason, and I will definitely be there for sure on the Friday and Saturday. And Sunday. And Sunday, yeah. Speak for yourself. I'm going to Los Angeles. So. Right, well, <laughs> Tom and I will be. <laughs> That's great. Uh, do, does a ticket stub? Uh, is there even such a thing? Will Will that get you a discount on anything at Veselka? That's the That's the question. <laughs> um, there, there was there was there was talk of that. Uh, it has not been. Let's say T TBD. Okay. Um, or you know. Um, no, no. But you are trying to raise money for for the Ukraine. So. Um, well, the so we we we're we're, 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 we're 
we're announcing that net proceeds, obviously there is some revenue sharing with the theater here in New York, but whatever net proceeds I am partnering with Razum for Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, and those those funds will go to their organization as a donation. Um, they're, they're actively um, soliciting monies for these medical backpacks for paramedics on the front line. So, mm -hmm. and we're always finding ways to partner and raise monies and awareness. I mean, I, I'm just concerned uh, if we do some kind of uh, offer with the ticket stub, everything is electronic. No, no, days. no, there's no more. Yeah. There's no more ticket stubs anymore. Um, right. No, no, no. It's, we, we, yeah, we, exactly. we, we encourage people to come eat borscht, but not not with the white shirt uh, prior <laughs> or uh, or after the show. Um, maybe maybe we'll have a special. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, we're in the final stages of doing something uh, creative to the, you know, to incentivize moviegoers to come visit. Yeah. Well, what I, it sounds like also you're, you've have found during the journey of putting the film out there and, and the journey certainly is just basically starting almost uh, theatrically speaking, but that the that New York city folks, New Yorkers are a diaspora as well. And we're spread out all over the place and just, uh, you'll be able to see the film almost, it sounds like no matter where you are, even before the streaming begins down the road. So see it theatrically, see it on the big screen. Uh, and then, um, you know, I was and also I, thinking- yeah, mm -hmm. jump in there. I'm, just, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I was not at say all. Def definitely see it with an audience because as we we premiered last weekend at Santa Barbara and we did two screenings, and then I was able to give an advanced screening the other night to the Picture House Film Club, run by critic Stephen Witte. And amongst those three screenings, I always say you think you know what the movie is, but then when you go in and watch it with an audience, as the filmmaker, you wa you watch the audience, you don't watch the screen. Mm -hmm they tell you what the movie is and they mm -hmm. were laughing yeah. applauding at moments i never could have predicted <laughs> and to me this is a movie best served with an audience um, maybe you'll like enjoy it. it someday at home watching on a streamer but without a doubt this is a movie that people feed off each other i'm guessing one of those uh, moments may have been when eric adams was at the restaurant but i don't <laughs> i'm not the Pelham audience, especially I, <laughs> the Santa Barbara audience, yes, for you know just kind of generic reasons. Were oh my back. gosh! The well, New York audience really made some sound. I bet they did. I only bring it up because you know it's in the trailer, so I didn't feel like I was dropping the spoiler there. But it's sure, it's sure. quite a scene to be behold. Um, yeah. David Duchovny, uh, a Ukrainian American actor, is does the voiceover. Da David Sanborn lends his musical talent to the. To the uh, score, it is directed by uh, Michael Fiore, making his first time on this podcast. I'm sorry it's taken so long. I've been doing this for like 12, 13 years, to be honest with you. Um, so shame on you. But <laughs> uh, and 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 the same diasporas. It, it, uh, I think somebody alluded to this earlier, but just knowing the Veselka is there, and when I go down to New York City, I can go and stop by. Um, it also gives a level of comfort. Just and that's what I think you experienced. You know. As you travel around and just knowing that Selk is still there and thriving and is a, such a, uh, you know, like a, a nerve center or maybe it's not the right expression, but it, it does give some comfort. So thank you guys for that. And um, uh, it was remarkable and lovely talking to you all. Well, same here. Thank you for your insightful questions and comments. and uh, Patronage. And what's that? We appreciate Thank you it. for your oh. Thank you for your patronage. Oh yeah. yeah, you're welcome. I'm sending the dry uh dry cleaning bill though to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got I have news for you. You're not the first to send us a dry cleaning bill. We have a close relationship with our neighboring uh, cleaner. <laughs> guys, good luck with the uh the film, and, and um I I'll stop yeah, by you. soon and say hello. Thanks. Please from the Hudson Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Thank you.